Which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Or more specifically, Reorks's gambling problem or Hidukel's trickery? Welcome to another Dragonlance Saga episode. My name is Adam, and today we're going to talk about the Chaos War. I'd like to take a moment and thank the members of this channel and invite you to consider becoming a member by visiting the link in the description below. You can even pick up Dragonlance gaming materials using my affiliate links. I am referencing Dragons of a Summer Flame, Dragonlance 5th Age Dramatic Adventure Game, Chaos War Adventures, Seeds of Chaos and Chaos Spawn, and the Dragonlance Campaign Settings Sourcebook for this information. If I leave anything out or misspeak, please leave a comment below. There are two primary reasons for the Chaos War. The first was Wizards of the Coast buying TSR and wanting to capitalize on a then-dying franchise, Dragonlance, and the second was Ariakin Ariakas. How was Ariakin and the Knights of Tequesis to blame, you may ask? The Grey Gem was captured by the Irida on their hidden island of Anatha. It was the Knights of Tequesis who were exploring the smaller islands and landmasses scattered around Anselon who discovered Anatha, which terrified the native Irida. The Arda Decider made the choice to crack open the Grey Gem and use its magic to shield their island from the world. This is the single act that released Ionthus, otherwise known as Chaos, who made war on Kryn, causing what would be referred to in the first half of the Fifth Age as the Second Cataclysm. The Chaos War was defined by the gods and mortals of Kryn coming together under the control and direction of the Knights of Tachesis to stop Chaos. The Chaos War began with the breaking of the Grey Gem in 383 Alt Cataclysis, only 30 years after the War of the Lands. This was a time of reconstruction. Diplomats were working to ease relations between the good nations of Kryn. The Knights of Salamnia were in the middle of a reformation under the direction of the Grand Master, Gunther Uthwistan. Raceland Majir traveled back to the Age of Might and challenged the gods. Kidiar Uthmatar, known as the Blue Lady, waged war on Palanthus with Lord Soth, and the Knights of Salamnia released Lord Ariakin. While the Kweishu rose under the leadership of Goldmoon and Riverwind, Ariakin also grew a new knighthood based on the Knights of Salamnia, but with the direct influence from Tachesis. They developed a knighthood in secret off the northern coast of Anselon in the Turbidus Ocean on an isle called Storm's Keep. The Knights of Tachesis were such a vital threat that after conscripting the tarmac from Ithencarthia, nothing seemed to be able to stop them. Even after Kerman Majir and Tannis Half-Elven tried to convince the Knights of Salamnia of their might, no one took their threat seriously. So with military precision, the Knights of Tachesis invaded Anselon from its northeastern coast, and it was as if the dragon armies had returned, but with honor and discipline. Palin Majir would hear his uncle's voice in his head and traveled with Steel Brightblade to the Tower of High Sorcery in Palanthus and entered the Abyss. There, he found Raceland Majir, and together they spied on the Pantheon of Deities discussing the threat of Chaos. Chaos, being released by the Arctic, caused a massive heat wave all across Kryn. While the Knights of Tachesis were conducting their lightning campaigns, capturing Calaman, Eastern Salamnia, Naraka, and most of Anselon's heartland, because of the sweltering heat caused by chaos, crops withered and died, rivers turned to muddy trickles, and countless lakes and ponds evaporated and wholly disappeared. The sky was blanketed by a constant haze. Disease raged unchecked, and many clerics preached of storms of chaos coming from the north. Divine magic was also unpredictable, as the gods were busy trying to deal with this new dire threat. The Knights of Tachesis began their assaults on Sylvanesty, Quolinesty, and southern Ergoth with their divided force, simultaneously as Lord Ariakin set his sights on the High Clarist's Tower. The gods made the decision to unify the people of Kryn under the Knights of Tachesis in order to stand against chaos. The High Claris Tower, which had stood as a protective beacon of Salamnia for well over a millennia, fell in a single day, taken by Lord Ariakin, and the result were the countless deaths of Knights of Salamnia and the Heer of the Lance, Tannis Hap Elven. Within a month, 
southern Ergoth and Kulinisti, and all the land from Nordmar southeast through the Calchas Mountains, including Kendermore, and south through the plains of Dust and west into Salamnia and Abanasinia, were all conquered by the Knights of Tachesis. Only northern Ergoth, Sylvanisti, and Thorbarden, with some Calchist hill dwarves, resisted. Mount Nevermind erupted as the gnomes tried to use war machines against the Knights of Tachesis. As Erikan maintained command from the High Claris Tower, his forces easily took control of Palanthus, and then the storms of chaos hit. Tachesis calls her dragons and knights into the abyss to strike back at chaos and his minions, but tells Lord Erikan to hold a wing back at the High Claris Tower so after the battle they could easily maintain control of the devastated world. Elves and ogres fought side by side to protect Blood and Sylvanisti. The Vingard Mountains began to burn, and Chaos begins to release fire dragons underneath Thorbarden. A rift opens in the turbidus ocean as flames herald the release of Shadow Whites which utterly erase their victims from the river of time and memory. Daemon warriors and fire dragons. They wreak havoc upon western Nordmar, Estwald, the northern wastes, and the plains of Salamnia. The minions travel to the Syrian Sea as Dalimar the Dark leads wizards into the rift, and then Chaos reached the High Clarist's Tower. Lord Erikan fell with every single knight. The only survivors were the wing held back as Tachesis requested. The sun stops its procession across the sky, the stars and moons vanish, and Chaos runs wild across Ancelon. Frost White's plague the Icewall Glacier. He gouges a huge canyon through the Salamnic Plains, and the Lords of Doom outside Sanction erupt. The Blood Sea boils as the Maelstrom stops. The world is lost. Reorks and Palin recover the pieces of the Grey Gem with a plan to recapture Chaos and enter the Abyss with the Spell Book of Magius. In a chaotic war of desperation, metallic and chromatic dragons led by Steel Brightblade attack Chaos. Tasselhoff Burfoot cuts Chaos's toe and Usha catches a drop of the blood in the Grey Gem. Having any aspect trapped in the Grey Gem forces Chaos to leave, only if the gods leave with him. In this moment, the Grey Gem explodes, shooting tiny crystals into the air, and the survivors find themselves in a field outside Solace where an image of Fizban, retconned to Tachesis, tells Palin that magic and the gods are gone, and this is now the Age of Mortals. Islands called the Teeth of Chaos emerged from the ocean where the rift once was. Residual Chaos minions continue to terrorize the land as they are slowly defeated by the survivors. In less than a year, the Knights of Tachesis had more control of Anselon than any force Tachesis had ever created, only to be utterly decimated by chaos. The land was devastated by the short-lived war, which would again come to be known as the Second Cataclysm, and the people of Kryn would find a way to continue on as they always do. The Tomb of the Last Heroes was constructed outside Solace to honor the fallen Knights of Tachesis, Knights of Salamnia, and other heroes who fell in the battle against Chaos. And that is all I have to say about the Chaos War. What do you think of Ionthus? Should he have left after a drop of blood was captured? Did Raceland's role in the Chaos War make sense? And finally, did you enjoy this transition from the Age of Despair to the Age of Mortals? Leave a comment below. I would like to take a moment and remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, ring the bell to get notified about upcoming videos, and click the like button. This all goes to help other Dragonlance fans learn about this channel and its content. Thank you for watching. This has been Adam with Dragonlance Saga, and until next time, remember, I've never had my guts ripped out before, and while it would certainly be entertaining, I don't suppose it would be conducive of a long life.